The next item is Shea Neask letter and immediate repairs update. As a review at the last meeting on Thursday, um, we um, heard from the facilities, um, the facility subcommittee had taken up this issue already that um, Shea was placed, and I don't wanna use the incorrect wor word, but um, was given a warning by Neask that correct, was put under warning status um, because of facilities needs in the building. Um, while not an extensive list, um, safety concerns around electrical, around HVAC, um, around roofing and auditorium, um, as well as windows were, were all mentioned as in need of repairs. Um, and the facility subcommittee discussed this. We discussed it at the last meeting and we talked about um, the highly desirable um, way of moving forward, which is to use our stage one and stage two that has already been completed and paid for um, and move forward immediately with going out to perform these repairs um, and perform this work. In order to do that, we need to um, use the funding source that is identified in stage one and stage two, which is the $220 million bond. Um, because that is how RISE approval works, that once you've completed it, you have identified your funding source. And if we are able to access the $220 million bond, we are able to immediately take up working on these, um, these items and hopefully see a very fast turnaround of them. However, um, accessing that $220 million bond does require, um, well, is uh, a conversation that um, the facilities uh, uh, committee asked me to take on with the city. We had a meeting yesterday. Um, Dr. McWilliams was there, Ms. Devine was there, our attorney was there. Um, and uh, it was with um, the mayor, the mayor was unable to be there. So Mr. Zalazo was there instead. And I expressed to the um, mayor's team our desire to move forward immediately with these repairs for the Shea community, um, for the Shea students who are there, for the Shea faculty that are there, and in and the need to really move expeditiously to get this done. Um, we I also highlighted what we would risk with going slowly and not using the $220 million bond. We would risk having to go through a stage one and stage two again, which would be on an expense. We would risk possibly losing out on the ramped up state funding that we are getting, which is an additional 8% um, back from the state because we need to have moved through stage one and stage two already to get that. And I spoke about um, the, uh, the possible loss of accreditation, which would also be a loss of state and federal funding as well as the effect on our students who would have um, their FAFSA funding possibly at risk if we did lose accreditation. So I explained all this to the mayor's team. Um, the mayor, as I said, was not in that meeting. So um, he communicated after the meeting, he said that, and so this is what I would said, I would share with you all that, um, and I will, I will have um, Ms. List send out the exact email to the full committee. It came right before this meeting. Um, he said that he is not opposed to the funding strategy, but he would like to um, better understand the projects we would be tackling. And he mentioned sitting down um, with Ride about future submissions. So I'm not sure if something was lost in the past off of information because as I tried to express, we already have done our submissions to ride. We've done our stage one and stage two. At this point, this committee is ready to act. We're ready to um, solicit bids and begin um, putting together a schedule to do this work. Um, obviously some of these big ticket projects we would wanna do this summer because we can't do them with students in the building. Um, so like I said, that is, my most recent update as of just about right before this meeting when that email came out that um, the mayor said he is not opposed to the funding strategy, but does want another meeting with Collier's, the superintendent and ride 
And as I said, I'm not sure why ride is included in that as we have moved past that. But that is where I am right now with that communication. And I said I would report back at this meeting. Mr. Sharpna. Uh, when the mayor references not being opposed to the funding structure, what structure is he referencing? The so, 220? I think that the, so my email, which um, the original reach out that I sent to him proposed that we would like to move forward, that I wanted to know if he had any objection to us moving forward with the $220 million bond, because that is the way that we can move immediately, as opposed to if we have to go through a stage one and stage two with ride, we will have to do, we, it would be very tough to turn around a stage one for February. So we might be talking about a stage one in October, a stage two the following February, and not being able to do any work on this school until, I'm losing track of my years, 2024, 2025. So I, I made it very clear that that was, the, that was the only, I didn't give any other options. So I said that that is how the committee at our last meeting, we talked about that would be our preferred mode of moving forward. As I said, I didn't give any other options. So when he, when he references, he never said the $220 million bond. He said this funding, and I will send the exact email, this funding approach. I, I, I appreciate the clarification. I just, I don't, I don't think we're any further than we were on this last meeting when you scheduled a meeting that you had yesterday. Um, and I, I think the, the problem is the timeline that as you illustrated, if we don't access the 220 that's available to us, then we don't have any chance of completing meaningful repairs, renovations at Shea before NIAS comes back for their accreditation decision. Um, so we're talking about having to submit a stage one in February, if we don't access the 220, we're gonna go through the end of this month, I'm assuming, with no decision on that. I, I just, I worry that the timeline is tightening on us and we're, we scheduled a meeting, we had it. There wasn't any kind of resolution. It was to schedule another meeting at another time yet to be determined, or has that meeting been set? That meeting has not been set. So I want the easiest, cleanest approach would be to, for the city to give this body a not to exceed $20 million from the 220 that has already been approved by the voters and let us get to work on from the stage one and two that we currently have approved let us get to work on doing $20 million worth of renovations at Shader to keep the accreditation. I, I think we're playing with fire with this accreditation if we start to drag this timeline out some. Mr. Knight. The problem that you've got is we've at this point allowed the city administration to interfere with the school department's operation. What you have is an approved bond by the voters of the city of Pawtucket for 200 and I think it was 224 to be exact. That was in fact voted on. There is approximately 100, 100 million left. So there will be after, after Baldwin. Shea, right, after Baldwin, but the Shea and Coleman um, renovations together were about 100. Okay. That's already been approved by the voters of this city. At this point in time, if we put a monetary limit on how much we tell them we're going to borrow to start this repair of the facade and whatever else we have to do at Shea, we risk having to go through stage one, stage two again, which will require a bond vote again. Uh, I think at this time we should just say, let's go ahead with the, with the repairs. There are emergency repairs. We do get 
run it. Um, yeah. Um, money back from the state on it. Um, we're losing, if we don't do this, the possibility of losing accreditation for the kids, safety of the staff and the kids in the meantime, and we're losing a year at least. So my recommendation to this committee would be that we go forward with the shade repairs and don't put a monetary uh, cap on it even though we know we won't spend the entire $50 million at this point. Uh, but we've got the authority of the voters of the city of Pawtucket to do this. The mayor should not step in and say, well, I need to know more and I need to talk to Wright. It's not his place. This is a Pawtucket School Department building. It is in the Pawtucket School Department's possession. We are responsible for its maintenance. We're responsible for its safety. Let's move forward with this because it is an emergency. Let's protect our staff and our students immediately. Thank you, Mel. Um, so they, the question for this committee is, are we taking any action tonight? Are we um, taking any vote? I mean, we, we obviously can't take any action to actually go out to bid or anything like that because this isn't, that's, that's not how it's listed. It's listed as NEAS letter and repairs update. Um, so obviously I do not think that, um, I think that communication definitely needs to continue with the city on this, but is the committee taking any official direction at this meeting or are we putting items on future agendas? Mr. Knight. Oh, I'm sorry. Attorney. Uh, one of the issues is that the phase one, phase two project is specific funding. Mm -hmm. And so even if we were able to get funding from some other bucket of money that might be accessible to, to the district, um, it would require us to restart phase one, phase two, which is one of the issues we're trying to deal with. Yeah. And so the city does play a role if it allows us to access that bond money, we are able to by the voters. And so we're at the point in identifying the urgency that that's at play here. Um, but the communication or, or rather the uh, getting the city to facilitate to access that fund is a necessary step. Otherwise, we see what happens when we do the next phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, as I said, I think that it is important to articulate that although this is an expense, and it is a, a bonding expense out of the bonding money that the voters have approved. I really worked to articulate yesterday in the meeting all of the money that would be lost if we do not use this first approach, namely that we are going to do this work. At this point, we, we are not, this body is not going to risk losing accreditation for our students. So we have to do this work. How However, even with us saying we have to do this work, NEAS could come back in November and say, you haven't even started it yet because if we can't use this 220 million, then we have to, in order to get reimbursed, go back out through stage one and stage two. So once again, I articulated that we have already expended and Ms. Devine can give me the exact number. Ms. Devine, how much did we expend on the stage one and stage two for? About around $2 million has been expended already on a stage one and stage two. That money is completely lost and some, work. and some design work was done, but that money is completely lost if we have to do another stage one and stage two. In addition, we have to then pay for another stage one and stage two. In addition, we lose the 8% additional funding and we risk state and federal funding. So all of that loss of funding is at risk if we do not act now as Mr. Knight articulated. Ms. Devine? I'm sorry, and I just want to add one thing. A, a new stage one and stage two will go to the income tax fund as well. Yeah. So we, we need a funding flow, but if that's 20 million, we would need to find 20 million. Yeah. Um, Mr. Knight, then Mr. Larby. We have a motion that we start the process immediately 
to repair, do the emergency, emergency repairs that are needed due to the NEASC letter. And the dispatch has been in, uh, included in the bonding that's already approved. This is an emergency. We are allowed to act on it tonight because it is an emergency. Am I correct? Act on it, but the issue with proceeding with foul hats and leaving the that bond money is we still have to go to the city. We still have we still have access to that money. It's already guaranteed. It, it was approved by the voters, but the yes, it was. Finished, so we still have to go to the municipality and say, well, they issue those bonds. So but then they issue the bond, that's right. But they would have to do that. We have to make sure that that gets done before we start any work. Otherwise, we don't have money to, to pay folks to do that work. Uh, even on an emergency basis. If we do do it from another pool of money, if one were available, then it required us to essentially restart those phases that we talked about phasing two and three, which would be go off of the uh, uh, work that's already been done to pay for it. Okay, this, we're all in agreement that this is an emergency situation. My question becomes this, if this is an emergency that we must do we have approval of the voters the city at that point has already gotten approval for that bonding they're withholding it to be i don't know what you want to say but the city thinks they can just say nope we're not going to do it and our kids are going to suffer not in my lifetime i made a motion i'd like somebody to second it what was the motion? <laughs> that we move forward on um, this progress, this process immediately by seeking bids, et cetera, et cetera, for the re emergency repairs. I'll, I'll, I'll second the motion to discussion, discussion purposes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, I, I was wondering and, and, uh, and thank you for the information um it seems like if we want to move urgently it, that we're really unfortunately at the mercy of whether or not the city wants to cooperate um unless there's a, another option on the table Things that you have stated um, that are in risk and jeopardy of losing if we don't act accordingly. Um, other than that, I I'm not sure what what we can do without the the city really cooperating. Um, so we have to respond to the mayor in writing specifically what we lose which is accreditation which means we have high school that has no value and it has no value to our students and if he wishes ask him to clarify what he means by being part of ride in the future Ask him to clarify that because we need to know what he's looking to do. Um, but I do believe, you know, and I'll stand with the others. I agree. We need to do something. Ride told us we couldn't do it. Then they sent us a letter that said, do it or else you lose, <coughs> you lose everything. And now the mayor is saying, well, I agree, but. I want to be part of the future. So I clarify that the town does yeah, modifier of they. Ride didn't send us the letter. No. No, okay. So originally Ride yes. sent us a letter that said we couldn't do we any can't do any work on Shay. Yes. Correct. Yes. So, so Ride told us to put Shay and Tolman on hold for all repairs. Correct. The letter from 
NIASC is the one you're referring to that said we must do repairs. So the okay. NIASC says we must do them or we lose the accreditation, mm -hmm. which we would have done them had RIDE said we could. Mm -hmm. So we need to clarify, and I think we need to put it in writing with the attorney's assistant mm -hmm. um, to outline all of these things and, and get it to them and ask for a response by the end of the year. And I do think that one of the things that came up in the call, once again, the mayor was not on the call, but with Mr. Zalazo, what one of the things that came up were questions about the exact scope of work that we were looking to do. And as I said, we, I know I knew the big ticket items, but he mentioned um, lockers were referenced um, and whether or not that would be in there. I said, I believe we would just be looking at immediate safety upgrades, but perhaps being able to better clarify those items and um, give a rough estimate would be helpful. Um, Mr. Charbonneau, and then Mr. Knight, I think I saw your hand out of the corner of my eye. Okay, Mr. Charbonneau. Mr. Charbonneau, you okay with that? They put us on hold and discussion of Unified High School. That was their hold. Okay. Mr. Charbonneau? Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, I would just, I, Mr. Lobby, I agree wholeheartedly with you. And I, before I, I expand on that, I, I, just to level set, right. We had a plan to fully renovate Shed that was approved on multiple occasions. And then once the conversation about a unified high school came, that's when Ride said, okay, we're gonna stop spending money at Shea until we decide on a unified high school. So I don't think Ride is against us doing renovations at Shea. Um, but having said that, I agree with Mr. Lott, a formal letter from this committee to both the mayor and the city council requesting that they provide access to the uh, to the existing bond um, so that we can meet some of these immediate repairs. Um, I don't think we put a dollar figure on it, but I think we can articulate certainly from our stage one and two that we've already done those big ticket items that will be meaningful and impactful. Uh, um, and I think we sent it to the council and the mayor requesting that they take immediate action on it and and then see when we have a future council member sitting right here, Mr. Marino, for your first oh, meeting. Yeah, we, do. <laughs> we can just send him with a letter. <laughs> right, and, and of course, outlining the, you know, the consequences of not, mm -hmm. of not acting. So, um, so I know we have um, a special meeting on Monday. Um, there, uh, there are obviously we, there's there's a current motion on the table, um, so we couldn't take another motion to send a letter. But the two options would be for you to authorize um, me to sign a letter after legal has drafted it, articulating what we've spoken about. The second option would be to have that letter drafted and put on the next agenda on Monday. Um, but like I said, that is only if a motion is put on the table for a letter. So, so the, the, the current, the current motion is to move forward with repair, with the emergency repairs for health and safety and send a letter requesting requesting that we access the bond money. I think, we, I think we've moved forward as much as we have the plans. We have everything available to us. I, I think if you want to pull that portion of it from your motion, Mr. Knight, and okay. so have it just be the letter. We have to, we have to move forward with the action. <laughs> An action has has to be taken by this committee today. Agreed. Now, sending a letter isn't an action. That's in the future. Because regardless of whether they say they're giving us the money, they're giving us the money. Let's be realistic. It's been approved by the voters. They have an obligation to fund the schools properly. Doing an emergency repair is funding the school property properly. 
What's the issue? The mayor doesn't want this. The next action, if there was going to be an next action, even on a regular basis, would be issuing out our RFP insisting who we're supposed to do the work. I don't see how we can do that without the funding to do it. And so the motion as it stands right now, even as amended, uh, would be problematic as far as ensuring that we have the funding for us to do it. Um, one has to go before the other. considerations that I don't want to speak for I might be above me for sure as far as they might be taking into account with the amount of bond uh, they are willing to issue or can issue uh, but that's besides the point there is an approved amount of money it's, it's well within range of what we need to address the issue the letter can certainly address that uh, what's at stake the dollar amounts of money that would be at stake if we were to uh, lose this regulation or All that can be put in a letter for sure. Uh, but going forward, the likely of addressing those issues will help us make one of the big issue as to that we have now. The motion as it stands right now, even if it was to be amended, we still have that component of, of doing work that we can't that we can pay for at this point. Mr. Knight. That approval's already there. The money's already been bonded. It hasn't been taken out of the bond that was done. So the money's there. The mayor can say, oh, no, 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 no. It's there. So there's a, Ms. Grant. Can I just make a motion to send a letter to the mayor and the city council? Mr. Knight's motion is on the table right now. So okay. we can call, call the vote. we can call the vote on Mr. Knight's motion, which I would like to clarify is to move forward with emergency repairs and send a letter. That is the current motion. It has been seconded. Thank you, Ms. Noah. I will do just that. Um, Ms. Barber, will you please um, call the Ms. Danilo? No. Mr. Charbonneau? No. Mr. Gr Ms. Grant? <coughs> Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Larby? No. Mr. Marino? No. Ms. Juby? No, the motion fails six to one. Um, so now we can have Ms. Grant. So I'd like to now make a motion to send a letter to the city council and the mayor asking them whether we have a meeting or, or um, is before the end of the year um, to decide on what will, you know, just kind of get more clarification in regards to Shay and that it's an emergency and that we need to uh, get this done as soon as possible. So um, I, I um, as I said, would you want me to draft that and sign it articulating those points in consultation with legal or do you want that letter on the Monday agenda? I, I, I I would feel confident. I, I feel like you mentioned a few things that I hadn't mentioned originally, as in possibly asking for a meeting. Um, the original letter that was referenced was to articulate the need, um, ask for the funds, and that's it. That that was that was the original that we articulate the need and we and we and we respectfully ask for um, for for confirmation that we have access to the funds. So I feel like that's a pretty simplistic letter for me to think about drafting, but you added a few more ideas in there and I wanna make sure that I don't write something that necessarily doesn't reflect what you're saying. Well, I think we need to, um, you know, kind of focus on the urgency. Okay. You know, I think um, the way it was interpreted from one to another, um, 
Mm -hmm. I, I think the urgency wasn't there, mm -hmm. um, whether it be his staff or, mm -hmm. um, and I think we really have to, you know, make sure that they understand what the urgency is in regards to this and that we really do need to know mm -hmm. um, what we have to do okay. um, so we can get approval as soon as possible so we can move forward. Okay, so a, a letter that articulates the urgency spells out the um, the need, the need. Mm -hmm. and asks for the funding source. Yeah. Well, the repercussions as well. Spells out need and repercussions. I'm going to be checking with Ms. Barbara afterwards. So the question, we have that letter, that's fine, but that does not ask for clarification of what they said about meeting with Ryan in the future. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, are we going to ignore I, that? Or? Well, well I, I, I'm, not, I'm not following. Who said anything about meeting with, with Ryan in the future? Well, no, the, the, the mayor did. That was the mayor's brief. The mayor asked for, if I'm correct, Dr. Williams um, asked for a meeting. And um, you were also, did you also see that email? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so the, it, the, the action step from the email was to set up a meeting with the superintendent's office, the Collier staff, and a loop in ride and the mayor's office. So I'm not saying that that meeting. Right, exactly. Doesn't. Yeah, I don't know if that was implied or not. Um, but uh, so there's been a motion to send a letter. I, I just need to have clarification if if the committee is confident with me sending that letter um, once it's been reviewed by legal or if this committee wants to then see and approve that letter. So the current motion is just that we send a letter. It's been seconded. I, I think the time sensitivity of this thing, I, I trust your judgment to capture the points and the, and the feelings of this committee. I think everybody's had a chance to weigh in in the discussion of it. Um, I mean, for me, it's, a, it's as simple as, do we, can we access the 220 million that's remaining? I mean, I, I'm not so sure what the big discussion is about. Mm -hmm. There's money on the table. It's been earmarked for this school. There's plans that have been drawn that have been approved every step of the way. And now we're at a point where somebody's telling us you're risking your accreditation if you don't do this. And we're saying, let's have another meeting and figure out where we're going to get the funding. We know where the funding, we have the funding. Um, so there's a motion. It has been seconded. Um, I'm not hearing any specific need for the letter to come back before the committee. So, um, but obviously the, the committee will be sent the letter when it's sent. You'll be copied on it. Yes, Ms. Benoit. Can we ask for a response by a certain time? I think we can ask for an immediate response as, as soon as possible. Yes. Has anyone seen the issue that at, 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 at sale, but only also has seen it? As in walk to school? No, no, no. Oh, the okay. letter? Yeah. The letter was sent to the mayor. Okay. Yeah. No, the full letter, the 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 actual letter itself was sent to Shay. In addition, um, I sent a an a an email explaining um that the this to it in order to start the meeting. Um explaining the the funding and everything in writing. Um but like I said, this would be a formal letter sent to um the mayor and city council. Um after consulting with legal. Seeing no further discussion, Ms. Barbara, please take a roll call vote. Ms. Spinola? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Warby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Duby? Yes. The motion carries six to zero, and the committee, um, I will be sure that you are also copied on that letter when it is sent. Um, the next item is approval of funding for Shea Masonry Stabilization Project. Mm 
evening um, on at the facilities uh, committee on October 19th and a subsequent school committee meeting on October 27th, uh, we had uh, the committee had approved emergency masonry repairs um, based on immediate need to repair the masonry parapet at the Shea High School. Sorry, there's a bug. It's still there. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, and it was uh, the masonry parapet at Shea High School in the interest of the student safety. At these meetings, it was proposed that we would proceed with funding this work under emergency approval, immediate health and safety, which is an approval mechanism designed for emergency repairs with the standing housing aid reimbursement. However, we have been informed by RIDE in subsequent discussions that they will not grant an emergency approval for work at Shea while there is over the $46 million AMOC approval for Shea under the 234. So what was essentially going to be the bonded approvals, um, they're saying that those approvals are still there if we have a new high school and wouldn't be using per se, we would be using Shea, but in other words, they're not, grant, they're not saying use the funds, they're just saying you have approval for those building repairs. Yep. So I was just going to ask at this time without a clear direction if the bond funds are available in the 234 approval um, or if the remaining balance could be is going to be part of the unified school project. The recommendation at this time is to utilize the capital reserve reserve to submit for housing aid reimbursement via the standard process. In other words, it won't be pay go, um, but we would need to use our our capital reserve, the school department's capital reserve funds to get this project done. And I believe it's something under 500,000, because I know that that's the emergency repair. Um, that was the one that was on the roof there. Motion to approve on the table by Mr. Charbonneau. It was seconded by Ms. Vanolo. Any discussion, Mr. Charbonneau? So, Melissa, just to close the loop a little bit, Mr. Knight's previous comments about proceeding with emergency repairs, mm -hmm. Ride has already told us they're not reimbursing us for emergency repairs at Shea while we have $46 million in approval in approval. So yeah, not talking about the bond, just the approval. Right. Cause yeah. So, right. so there's two things. So, so they don't, so the emergency repairs and we did this, I think last June we did some emergency repairs, but at the, the, we did the uh, annex, we didn't have any approval for the annex. So last June, I remember we submitted some security um, and some door replacements. The reason they granted that as an emergency, we use capital funds and then they gave us the, they're giving us the housing aid back when we're done. That's the same process. What they were saying is when I submitted that letter, they were like, we'll get back to you. And then once the voters had passed the new high school, they were like, well, you're not going to be using that approval. They weren't talking the bond. They were only talking the approval. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we're asking right now, since we don't know if we have access to the bond, if we could use 500,000 in the capital, and then that would be reimbursed to us once the project is done it would be reimbursed to us next year because it's under a million dollars. That's that, whatever that power port, yeah. Take a roll call. Yeah. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Dewey? Yes, the motion carries six to zero. Um, thank you. 